Welcome everyone uh, to our uh, Big Geodata talk. Uh, we are ve very happy to host uh, today uh, three uh, distinguished speakers uh, who will talk about uh, Earth Observation for Ukraine uh, initiative, uh, which was initiated by, by Cloud Ferro, but uh, and supported with uh, many different institutions, uh, which aims, in fact, to support Ukrainian and international authorities in assessing war related environmental losses uh, by, by provisioning process capabilities combined uh, with a large. Uh, amount of um, Earth observation data. Uh, so we will hear about the current status of the initiative, uh, the, the, the products that are generated by, uh, by, by the members, the partners, uh, and also uh, the, the outcomes so, so far. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we have three speakers. So uh, the first one is Dr. Jan Musia uh, from uh, Cloud Ferro. Um, so I, I think uh, most of you uh, uh, is familiar with Cloud Ferro, so it's a uh, it is one of the uh, biggest uh, Earth observation companies, uh, uh, which is also operating a Crea Dias a Dias platform uh, to to provide uh, access to to Copernicus and other uh, third party mission mission data. Uh, so uh, Dr. Musia is specialized uh, in application of satellite imagery in various environmental analysis uh, such as agricultural monitoring, soil moisture monitoring, and and climate change. Um, so uh, currently he's working as a senior data scientist at, at, at Gladfero. Uh, our second uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Um, uh, Jansey Boyanowski. Uh, he is also specialized in application of satellite data in environmental studies, uh, especially climatology and uh, monitoring of, of agriculture. Uh, he's also an alumni of, of ITC, so he, he has a PhD uh, in, uh, from 2014. So uh, we are also especially happy to, to have him. And our last speaker, uh, she will join shortly, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Natalia Kusu uh, from the National Technical University of Ukraine, so a Kiev Polytechnic Institute. Uh, she is the dep department chair there. Um, um, and basically, she, she is working on uh, advanced methods, models, and emerging technologies in, in the area of data science for uh, data fusion, data processing, and analysis. So she will also talk about um, EO4 uh, UA uh, initiative from a uh, Ukrainian point of view. With this, I want to give the floor to Jan uh, for, uh, for, for the presentation. Okay, so, so, so we, we will uh, change a bit. So uh, Yenje will start and then I will uh, jump in with some technical issues. So maybe uh, please Yenrek tell about the outline. Yes, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so the order of the speakers was actually like we will be talking. So, but first of all, yeah, thank you for the invitation for the seminar and for me it's like, like especially nice because because of being an alumnus of, of University of Twente and the ITC. Um, so um, as, as, as I can already introduce you, the, 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 the today's talk is on Earth Observation for Ukraine initi initiative, uh, which is in general about supporting the use of EO data for, for Ukraine. So um, we, we divided the talk into three parts as we were three speakers. Uh, so first of all, I will give the brief introduction uh, to, to the initiative and to Cloud Ferro because that's uh, quite important. I mean, who we are and the, and the reason why we, we started the initiative. Uh, then Jan, uh, who actually coordinates the whole initiative, will give you all the details about the data and services. And uh, last but not least, we will have a special guest, Professor Natalia Kusul, to give you a, a results of some analysis on agriculture monitoring in Ukraine. So, um, and we'll finish with the discussion. So, to explain how this all started, I mean, it's quite important to say that that uh, Jan and me have been working on agriculture for many years using satellite data. So that's why, like immediately, the first thing that came to our mind was how work may affect agriculture production in Ukraine. And um, and this is of huge global importance. Um, and that's because Ukraine is in the top three producer of, of at least five uh, major crops that you can see on the left, left figure. But um, what you can also see on the right, there are countries that almost fully rely on this uh, on the import of grains from Ukraine. Uh, for example, the, the East African countries are like really de de depending on on this. 
So it's not only Europe, it's not only Ukraine, it's like a really global food security issue. <clears throat> and uh, this led us to, to our research colleagues in Ukraine. Uh, one of them were, was Natalia Kusul, um, because we were convinced that be, without without having them on board, we cannot really do efficiently, uh, we cannot start this kind of initiative. And so we are happy this this um, uh, this happened. And on this graph, you can see that it's clear that something it's something significant is happening with agriculture this year, and this is not surprising. So here you can see the results of the Joint Research Center that produce um, regularly the, the crop monitoring bulletins. Uh, which shows that on the leaf area index indicator, which is strongly linked to biomass, um, that compared to previous years, crops are growing significantly differently than 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 before in terms of either slowing down or, or lower values that they reached. So, I mean, we have no doubts that that um, uh, that there is many things going on that needs to be measured and assessed. And uh, this brings me to the to the to the aims of the whole initiative. Uh, so, the the first the first aim was to just provide access to computing power and and satellite data to our Ukrainian partners. Um, but but the next thought was that in this critical time, um, the analysis must be. Uh, you know, it must be as accurate and as efficient as possible because the, 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 the times need that. So we started the initiative to actually bring all the data, tools, services, and results that they could be provided by, by different entities into one place. You know, I mean, to really share what we can do, what we know, the data we have to make it really, uh, really efficient. Um, and, and by data, I mean both, um, uh, processing of satellite data to the level we called it uh, analysis ready data so like reprocessing of of satellite images but also higher level products uh, provided by different institutes and companies so like really really already some indicators or even the results of analysis and uh, because um what is also important to notice in my opinion that in 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 wartime monitoring environment uh, with satellite data it's it's different and much more challenging than than normally um it, for example in agriculture many assumptions that do you normally have uh, when do monitoring on uh, with satellite data just do not hold so basically we normally assume that what is on the field it's harvested we also assume that the main limitations of of crop yield it's it there is weather conditions but in this situation there are many different aspects which are also very difficult to be analyzed with satellite data uh, like that that crops can be resown due to food security reasons political reasons lack of grains and so on you can have field damaged you can have fires so i mean they are all things that that makes the the the, the task challenging and that you need to use different methods and also to mention is that lack of in-situ data is also a crucial uh, crucial limitation so um, um it's um yeah you can change the slide please so um it's it's worth um to explain also why in our opinion, Cloud Ferro was the ideal initiator of this kind of initiative. So, as Serkan uh, said at the beginning, that we are a, a technological company, uh, IT company, specializing in building infrastructures um, for cloud computing and data repositories dedicated to Earth observation data. And as you can see here, we build and we operate many flagship cloud computing platforms uh, ordered by major European Union institutions in this sector. Like, um, so the one used for within the initiative, also already mentioned, Crowdias, um, where you can have an access to immediate access to 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 global almost full archives of of Copernicus Sentinel data and many. Uh, other uh, commercial mm, distributors um, 
but also we we have we have similar i mean maybe not similar but also huge and important platforms for umedsat and the data store for ucmwf or also even national national one for uh, for dlr and we just decided and re realized that this kind of platform is a natural, a natural place, place to, to to bring together all the institutions um uh, institutions and 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 data and so you can see uh, the initiative already brings together many academies and institutions and, and companies. And just to mention a few, um, this consists of providers of, of, of raw and process satellite data like Rodias, like Sentinel Hub, like Airbus that can deliver, uh, deliver uh, high resolution images, but also providers of, let's say, generic tools for processing EO data. Uh, and here I, I can say, for example, of synergize, um, and uh, but also like entities that already carried out some analysis for Ukraine and share their results. And this is of course the Kiev Polytechnic. And for agriculture monitoring, we have Institute of Geodesy and Cartography in Warsaw uh, that um, provided some analysis of burn area analysis and and so on so as you see i mean the, the the group is quite large already and we are uh, we are of course open to 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 extend it so um yeah so let's move to some practical information so i pass the mic to jan who will give you details on that thank you okay uh thank you very much uh so now I will talk about data that are available within uh, our initiative. So first of all, they are the standard Copernicus data, Sentinels, Landsat uh, imageries that are available uh, on Crowdias uh, via our Finder and Browser tools. So here you can see the Finder. So this is a data discovery tool where uh, when you want to search for some particular scene, uh with many uh, options on the left you can specify uh, uh filters uh, there is also one uh, nice uh, um, uh, possibility to make a rest query so then it allows you to query the archive programmatically uh, we have also Crodia's browser for displaying these uh, images uh, in different uh, composites or products as NDVI, as you can see on the left. So this is something that we had uh, already at uh, start, and then we started to build our own uh, repository with uh, RD uh, analysis ready data, as uh, Jendrek uh, indicated. Uh, so then uh, we compute the card backscatter from Sentinel-1, uh, then we compute also uh, the coherence 12 days, and this is uh, thanks to the Vista company and to GRC. Uh, we computed the Maya level 2 uh, reflectance for uh, some limited tiles as a trial, and this was done by the CodeDE platform. Uh, we will now, uh, the, 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 the Maya product will be now continued, uh, hopefully, and then we can uh, make the level 3A mosaic uh, out of it. We have some in-situ data from the JECAM network uh, for Ukraine provided by the Polyte uh, Kiev Polytechnic Institute. And then you can find the um, data on crop types uh, in different place places, but this is the data from the previous years, not from this year. Uh, we have also the crop type classification in Kiev region provided by the Kiev Polytechnic Institute. We have forest fires in Kiev reg uh, region provided by uh, Institute of Geodesy in Cartography. And we have a very nice uh, um, data set of agricultural field boundaries uh, uh, in years 2016 till 2022, uh, generated from Sentinel-2 data by uh, Sentinel Hub. So uh, we as a cloud provider provide, uh, of course, the computing uh, capabilities uh, which are used to generate some products within our uh, EO4UA initiative. So we have the uh, Horizon platform on the left, which allows you to uh, manage the virtual machines. And we have Jupyter Notebook uh, on the right-hand side, which allows you to mm, run your code uh, 
without uh, taking care of uh, what are uh, the machines that uh, are behind the, the, this code. And uh, it is also important to mention that it's possible to test Creo DOS for free. You can get a 150 euro uh, credits for this and lots of uh, tutorials and uh, webinars on how to use Creo DOS are available on the YouTube. So we have also within our initiative de developed a geo portal, as uh, you can see here, with uh, where we publish our data sets for uh, Ukraine. So talking about interesting data sets, we have this uh, agricultural field boundaries uh, for entire uh, Ukraine provided by Sentinel Hub. So this is what you can see here. We have uh, daily Sentinel-2 uh, reflectance uh, uh, over the entire uh, Ukraine. Uh, so this is the WMS service that we provide. We have also Sentinel-1 backscatter and 12 days coherence uh, also daily. Uh, using this data, for example, uh, GRC is analy analyzing the war damage uh, and also uh, agricultural field boundaries. So here you can see the color composites uh, of uh, three different uh, coherence uh, images. And basically uh, the colors gives you an indication when the, in which time interval the, the damage or the change happened. We have uh, forest fires uh, near Kiev, uh, provided by the um, Institute of Geodesy and Cartography, uh, and also uh, institutes uh, hire some uh, Ukrainian uh, um, researchers uh, within our national uh, support from government. And this is within the Inconada uh, project. So, so now uh, I will tell you a little bit how to access the data. So uh, the first method is pretty simple. Uh, you download the whole archive on your uh, computer using uh, here on the on the web page. You just click download, and probably uh, you are thinking, how is it possible that the entire uh, repository is zipped? But basically, uh, what is within the a repository in the zip file are the VRT text files. And VRT, this is a special uh, format from GDL uh, that gives you just a header. So this is a small text file which points to the cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs files that are available uh, on our uh, S3 uh, Corradio storage. And if you maybe uh, words about cloud uh, optimized uh, format su suitable for streaming. So this is the cloud optimized GeoTIFF on the left hand side. And for the vectors, we use flat GeoBuff for, uh, and the important thing to mention is that all, both of these formats requires the GDL version 3.1 and uh, newer. So in case you want to um, use the, uh, the VRT files, uh, please keep in mind that you have to have uh, quite a recent uh, GDL version, but then uh, once you have it, uh, the cloud optimized formats allows you for asynchronous uh, read, reads from the, um, from the, uh, our web storage. So basically uh, you are working with the file streaming directly from our uh, cloud uh, computing environment. And the second method, how to access the data, basically you can uh, mount it also using the Samba share, which in Windows terms, uh, it's Windows folder. This is the path that you need to type on the uh, uh, on the Unix Linux systems. So uh, basically you have to type this in the file browser, not the web browser, but the file browser. And basically it appears uh, as a folder uh, and you can directly uh, work with it on older uh, Windows systems. You can use this path, but we also learn now that on uh, newer uh, Windows systems, the Samba client is disabled. 
So you have to enable it by yourself and then you can work with it as it was on your computer. Uh, and in case uh, you are asked for the password or something like this, there is no password. Uh, this is just a, a ordinary anonymous login. And basically what our next steps within our uh, initiative it's to support uh, Ukrainian and international uh, institution uh, by centralizing more and more data sets from uh, our members for Ukraine uh, and uh, offering cloud computing resources uh, uh, wherever it's possible. Uh, also to uh, our Ukrainian uh, partners, which are now yeah, endangered uh, in terms of losing their resources. We are also planning to add uh, Meteo data sets uh, for Ukraine uh, to allow for environmental modeling, uh, as uh, Yendrek said before, for example, for crop yields monitoring. Uh, we would like also to involve new uh, members uh, just to have uh, more and more uh, outcomes out of our initiative. We also look for long term financing and uh, our WMS OGC basically services that we have already developed. Now uh, we are uh, we are deploying them on the Kubernetes cluster, uh, cluster to allow for scalability and to make uh, them even faster. Uh, and ultimately, we would also would like to make a cre uh, custom cloud computing environment dedicated to EO4 UA based on Linux, uh, Stack Catalog, Open Data Cube and Open EO. So our uh, um, users uh, can benefit uh, and basically uh, work on their algorithms and not uh, and we will provide the data for them. OK, I think this is uh, uh, this is uh, this ends my part. So uh, if anyone uh, would like to join, please contact us. And uh, I think we will together we, we can uh, make an important change and we important uh, move forward for Ukraine. OK, thank you. And thank do you. we have uh, okay. thank you very much, Jan. Kusul with us uh, already? He is here with us, so. Um, OK, so. Professor Kusul, can you please um, join us? Hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, can I start my presentation, yeah? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, I am not too much familiar with Microsoft Teams. So, uh, can you see my presentation? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I cannot switch to the uh, first slide, but okay, it starts uh, with this. Uh, so um, thank you very much once again for invitation to this talk. Uh, first of all, uh, who we are? I represent National Technical University of Ukraine, Kyiv Polytechnic University. It is the biggest technical university in Ukraine, which uh, even has its own satellite at the orbit. And uh, I am a head of Department of Mathematical Modeling and Data Analysis in this university. Also, I have been working for 25 years in Space Research Institute. It is the institute uh, of our National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. It is a research organization which is um, uh, which has expertise in applied satellite monitoring and development of uh, methods of machine learning and satellite data processing 
Our team has a big experience of international collaboration. We try to contribute to the biggest initiatives uh, such as uh, GEO, GEO working plan and uh, its flagship projects such as uh, GEOGLAM and GCAM. Ukraine is member of European part of GEO, of EuroGEO, and we try to contribute into the European segment of uh, this organization. And also we are members of Copernicus Academy, and it is a network of educational organizations who uh, promote satellite uh, data and um, provide uh, teaching of students uh, to use and to utilize uh, satellite monitoring into different domains. What is our expertise? Uh, we are um, experts in applied mathematics and our main background uh, uh, related with satellite monitoring development of technologies um, of uh, different applications on satellite data, mainly it is agricultural applications or environmental monitoring. Uh, as well as we are mathematicians, we develop machine learning methodology uh, specialized on sat satellite data and solve problems of land cover and land use based on geospatial intelligence and so on. Uh, it is our main um, direction and uh, we have several um, methods uh, developed for deep learning classification of land cover land and land use. And based on this method, we try to uh, solve uh, uh, land cover, land use problem on the uh, entire territory of Ukraine. Uh, working with the whole country, we face this uh, problem of big data, this big data challenge. That is why we require cloud computer in our activities and uh, um, Earlier, we uh, used to use uh, uh, Amazon Web Services because we had uh, um, grant of Geo Amazon, but now it is uh, finished and uh, uh, as a members of eShape project, we are moving to uh, utilizing uh, of European cloud platforms, um, is, in particular Creo Dias. That is why um, uh, cloud platform is very essential for us and uh, in uh, this year when war started in Ukraine it became much more essential because uh, for some period we were, um, uh, we lost our uh, servers in Ukraine and even now uh, due to severe uh, missile attacks uh, the electricity in Ukraine uh, um, is uh, switched off for some periods and it is not reliable to use um, computational infrastructure inside country. That is why initiative EO for UA is very important for us and uh, we are very grateful to Jan to this initiative because it helped us to um, save, to uh, continue our investigation, our agricultural monitoring for this year. Uh, and um, as Jan mentioned already, uh, in uh, May July, and June, we got the support from ESA for um, our research, uh, namely for crop mapping and yield forecasting for Ukraine. It was done, uh, the service was provided by uh, Cloud Ferro uh, based on uh, CreoIdeas services. Uh, what are the result of uh, this um, uh, job of this work during the year? First of all, as well as a big part of Ukraine uh, became occupied this year, the big problem of food security. Um, arised 
And um, it, uh, it is important not only for Ukraine, but for many other countries, because Ukraine is one of the biggest providers of uh, cereals and of agricultural productions. And uh, using our methodology, using our classification of croplands and uh, different kinds of croplands, we estimated that uh, during uh, the war, under the occupation, um, a lot of territories uh, became occupied. For example, it is approximately 20% of total cropland in Ukraine and more than 22% of winter crops. Uh, here in the picture, in red, we can see the newly occupied area and in blue, it is the area that uh, were occupied uh, since 2014. So the ter uh, occupied territory increased a lot and more than um, two, uh, two million hectares uh, of uh, only of winter crops were occupied and uh, we couldn't harvest uh, um, crops and cereals in this territory. Using uh, this cloud platform and uh, our methodology of uh, machine learning, we uh, estimated the um, fields that were directly damaged by uh, military actions. Some of them are in northern part when uh, um, military actions uh, took place in the beginning of the war. Most of them are in the southern and east, eastern part of the Ukraine. Uh, so it is uh, big territory which were directly damaged with bombing, with uh, heavy uh, tracks, heavy, uh, heavy vehicles. And it could not be uh, harvested and could not be uh, cultivated. Using uh, CreoDias Cloud, we uh, we moved our uh, technology from Amazon Web Services to CreoDias Cloud and uh, um, estimate and um, uh, create the uh, crop classification map for 2021 to uh, to uh, just to check that uh, the technology is. Uh, working in this new cloud uh, platform and uh, using uh, it we were able to uh, build crop classification map for 2022 and uh, we were able to estimate the damages and the uh, losses in agriculture um, that were caused by this war. For example, it is only one of the examples where we uh, identified that more than 15% of our cropland was not uh, cultivated this year due to military actions and due to uh, unfavorable economical uh, conditions because we had uh, um, severe fuel crisis in summer and uh, Till now, it is not safe to um, do uh, to, uh, to um, provide some agricultural operations due to mining and uh, um, and so on. Uh, but uh, EO4UA, it is not only a platform where we have done our own investigations. We uh, use, and uh, it is very helpful for us uh, to utilize uh, products that were provided by the partners of um, uh, this uh, initiative. For example, the company Synergize provide the parcel delineations which were used uh, by us for filtering our crop classification map. And we estimated uh, how uh, this uh, uh, what is the impact of uh, this operation into the area estimation for different crops? And we see that it is very good technology. The uh, parcels delineation is very good, very precise, because we um, didn't get the bias in 
uh, crop area, but only uh, move filter some uh, salt and pepper uh, noise in some fields. Also, using this platform, we estimated uh, the area of fires. And uh, we, this year, we observed that all the front line of military action is under the fire. Uh, it was burned during the June and July. It was uh, months when uh, the weather was very hot and uh, dry and um, all, any military action, uh, any uh, missile uh, caused the burning of big uh, fields in this territory. And uh, a lot of, uh, we, we were able to estimate the areas uh, of uh, concrete crops that were lost due to fires. For example, it was 70,000 hectares of cereals and approximately eight hectares of summer crops and uh, 25,000 hectares of grassland. Um, a lot of uh, forests also were burned. So comparing, uh, taking into account information about land surface and meteorological conditions, we were able to separate the damages that were caused um, by war from the um, uh, decrease of uh, productivity that was caused due to could cause uh, by to by uh, meteorological conditions. Uh, we uh, published a paper, working paper of uh, World Bank, where we estimated the losses of uh, winter crop losses in winter crop harvest, and also right now we are estimating the losses for summer crops. And at the moment, we are establishing a geo portal based on the eo 4 ua cloud resources to visualize these processes which unfavorable processes which were caused by the war. And uh, what is important that uh, all this work is very important for our government because our national statistical department this year cannot uh, get the information from their recipients and uh, satellite information, the crop maps, um, delivered based on satellite data is the only objective information for them to estimate the areas, to estimate the harvest, and uh, our maps already uh, have been uh, included into State Agrarian Reestor. Um, I would like also to tell about uh, the new project which uh, was approved uh, one or two weeks ago. It is uh, a project Okre for Ukraine. Uh, it is devoted to quantifying war damages in Ukraine based on Earth reservation data in support to the initiative EU for Ukraine. And uh, this uh, project is coordinated by Anhalt University of Applied Science because this university is uh, coordinator of our German-Ukrainian Center of Excellence, where our university and Space Research Institute are also members. So uh, in this cooperation, we will get the uh, resources to systematically estimate the damages caused by war. And uh, we will get the access to big amount of uh, um, satellite data and not only open source uh, Sentinel data, but also for high resolution data uh, in the uh, amount of our grant. And uh, also uh, we will have very good connectivity bandwidth of uh, the network uh, through the giant and uh, have the API to uh, 
data repository and uh, Jupyter notebook, notebook interface. So for us, for uh, research papers and for um, uh, solving the operational tasks uh, with uh, this with this uh, capacities, uh, it is very uh, very good opportunity for us as for research as well as for uh, operational tasks. Main objective of this project is to expand our methodology uh, for the for entire territory of Ukraine and to assess the war damages uh, caused by war using uh, advanced machine learning algorithms, uh, which could be could run only in cloud infrastructure. Uh, it also um, increase the collaboration between Ukrainian uh, organizations and European organizations. It is very important for us right now because um, in Ukraine uh, the budget is empty and uh, we have no national uh, um, resources and uh, national resources for research. So this collaboration uh, provide us a new opportunity to uh, be in the same page as uh, European countries. And it is especially important because Ukraine was uh, included uh, as associated uh, partner of European Union. And right now we are preparing to become a full member um, of European Union. So we need to harmonize uh, our best practices and governmental practices with European uh, countries. Uh, so it has uh, very big uh, impact for uh, Ukraine uh, at first stage, and it was very it will be very important for the restoration of Ukraine because satellite data is the basis of. Uh, uh, estimation of damages and uh, the basis uh, of prediction um, and planning the development. Uh, also, I hope it will be um, important for our European partners because we also could contribute in development of uh, machine learning techniques and um, applications for big data processing. So I would like to uh, thank you very much once more for the initiative you offer Ukraine for such opportunity for us. And uh, I hope that we'll be, we will win all together uh, in our scientific and innovative uh, front. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kusul, uh, for your for your presentation about your devoted work uh, under these occupation uh, conditions, and also sharing it uh, through this EOF or uh, UA um, um, portal, so that uh, Ukrainian authorities, but as well as international authorities, uh, can can access this very valuable information, which you mentioned. In fact, the official authorities cannot provide due to due to existing conditions. Uh, and thanks for. Uh, uh, Yansi and Jan uh, for, for the presentation about, about the initi initi initiative. Uh, so now uh, I want to uh, open the floor uh, for, for, for the questions of, of, of the audience. Um, I see a Katarznia uh, raised hand for some time ago. If you have a question, can you can you please ask? Very well. Thank you very much. Thank you, the presenters especially Natalia that, that we have a contact with and uh, uh, the common kind of uh, exchange of our point of view and and projects. And I would like to add here the initiative of Institute of Geodesy and Cartography in a field of uh, remote sensing geodata for Ukraine that we open the uh, small project which we would like to extend uh, in a much bigger one in other fields and uh, i hope that uh, with natalia we can um, we can join our results because in fact we go to the same direction 
the needs was uh, for uh, for statistics. So as uh, ISA project has been done for Polish statistics and crop yield and crop recognition, it was a project that uh, has been finished with Space Research Center that was responsible for um, responsible for um, classification of crop and the methodology that was developed in Poland is extended uh, to Ukraine. Um, it was a project uh, called EOSTAT that both our presenters were uh, were participating when they were working with Institute of Geodesy and Cartography. And now we continue in a way of uh, of using for statistical offices in uh, in Ukraine that there were uh, representatives of districts, 490 districts until 2020 and after 136 districts that that uh, supported us with data of uh, crop yields since uh, 19 uh, since 2017 uh, until 2021. Um, and uh, uh, we are in the progress of uh, of this project that uh, is a short project for six months. So the results will come soon. I would like that uh, we will meet and discuss it before we finish. But that has a huge potential. And I think as as Natalia said, for the future, you know, to put together the, this terrible war disaster, what happened to to food yes and what happened to from the point of uh, drop in uh, in yield because it was not possible for spring wheat and spring um, spring vegetation to collect yield so well uh, so that was uh, the big disaster and i hope that our project will help with finding out uh, how much it was dropped for 2022, for 2023, because now it's time for sowing, and this sowing will not uh, um, appear in big part of, of Ukraine, because it's a danger to get on the field, and, uh, and, and what happens. And I think what uh, what is my, um, uh, what I appeal to, to, to try to do the big, huge project, uh, if we name it project, with the exchange of data, with finding out, with getting to the best results, and, uh, and then to find out something real, very important for Ukraine, because if we share the data, we will have the strength and not uh, just putting with some small projects and uh, and afterwards nothing happened. So uh, as this pro this project is sponsored by by ESA, so it has a European interest as well in it. Um, uh, so uh, we are we have finished some parts, but we are before um, the biggest part that having this classification. And now we can get into the specific specific crop. Uh, that's in a make it shortage. I just wanted that the audience knows that Institute of Geodesy and Cartography is strongly involved in agriculture and, and uh, crop development uh, prognosis uh, of the yield. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you for this additional information. I think EO4 uh, Ukraine can be a nice uh, a place to share, in fact, the outcomes of, of, of this research. Um, and that's the nice thing about this bottom up approach. So uh, basically a, a, any institution who is interested in providing their expertise, their their, their data, their processing um, um, power can contribute uh, to to this uh, this this project. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, Rahul. We can hear you. Uh, 
Maybe you can write it on chat as well, so we can read it. Sir, can you also you okay. did it? <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Agatha also wants to ask a question, so maybe we can continue with Agatha while Rahul is sol solving his problem. Yeah. Hello, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Kusul, for very interesting results. It's very impressive. You've done it a lot and uh, the results are really like, uh, wow. So it's it's also good to see that you are using the high technology and also the, the cloud computing. And uh, and also thanks to Jan and Jenshe for this initiative. So uh, I had a chance to, to meet you. Um, uh, also at the, the ISA, um, ISA meeting uh, this this year. Uh, so Jan also mentioned about the Inconada project. So we were the one developing this burnt area that are available on the platform. So it's for the small areas uh, around the Kiev. Um, but uh, also I wanted just to say that uh, we are um, just um, starting the collaboration with the Ukrainian National Forest University from Lviv. So we managed to get the funding from the through the uh, Norwegian funds uh, to fund uh, uh, one researcher, Ukrainian researcher. So we uh, we will be looking at the changes over forest uh, forested areas. So uh, that's uh, that's also we hope that it, uh, the results can be also placed on the on the platform and can be available to uh, to everyone. So yeah, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Okay. Thank you very much, Agata, also for your effort uh, for, for providing this information. Um, OK, uh, Rahul. Yeah, can uh, you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, basically, we're working in, in a GIS and mapping lab here in uh, the, the American University of Georgia. So we have like a big lab for here, and then we can uh, we want to work with your uh, projects like, you know, so. What, what's your question? No, no, you're asking about the uh, collaboration with the like, uh, like expertise. So, uh, okay. so yeah, okay. so, so we are, uh, we are in expertise like in GIS and uh, remote sensing here. Okay, wonderful. Um, maybe in relation to that, I, I, I can ask, okay, these interested institutions who want to uh, uh, co cooperate, so um, what they should do? So how to how to reach you, uh, what can? Okay, so, so, so maybe I will uh, answer this. So the main uh, contact point is uh, our web page, so the, the geo portal where we publish the data. There is also a, a section about, so then you can click it, uh, read about the initiative, and there is also a contact for us, okay. how to reach us. Basically, if you develop an uh, interesting data set that you would like to add to the initiative, so either you can also put it uh, somewhere, uh, send it, send us to us, so we can put it uh, in our um, public uh, S3 buckets, or you can also place uh, place it somewhere uh, in your cloud. Basically, the um, idea behind our repository is that it is, it is federated. So now we have two platforms, uh, CreoDS and CodeDE. Uh, but we can uh, include in our repository a lot of uh, platforms because, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, we have uh, the repository contains only headers, the small text files, which uh, leads you to the different clouds. O also, to the, the it could be a Google Drive, whatever is readable by the GDL library, and they have a lot of virtual file system uh, backends. Uh, we can add this to our repository uh, and then it's pretty easy to be shared with uh, other uh, other users or other uh, EU for uh, EO for UA uh, members. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you very much for, for the clarification. Uh, are there any other questions uh, from the others? Okay. If not, I will. I want to ask a ask a question. Uh, do you also have some certain uh, specific topics for which you need co contribution or expertise? Uh, 
because uh, uh, right now the initiative is open to everyone who wants to contribute and they come with their expertise or, or data or processing methods. But at the same time, we can imagine that there might be some 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 part, some actors which need a certain kind of analysis. So uh, do you think that it might be possible to uh, to to bring them together? So um, like like a, a place where people in need for a certain kind of information and data can indicate what they need and then uh, interested, interested institutions can also help with this this, this kind of uh, contribution. Uh, maybe, it's okay. a good, maybe it's a good question to Natalia because because you know like someone providing really the results first of all no Natalia maybe you can you have some things you, you that should be solved and we need more expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know uh, first of all uh, the products are needed uh, by our ministry different ministries, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Infrastructure, Ministry of Environment and so on. Just before uh, this our meeting, I had a talk uh, in the uh, meeting organized by our uh, Association of Enterprises in Space Research. And they are very interested in uh, this initiative and I hope that uh, they will join there because a lot of different uh, organizations in Ukraine try to do something, but they have not uh, uh, their pieces of puzzle. And they have some, maybe some small puzzle, but don't have uh, uh, different uh, uh, additional information that uh, will um, uh, together provide some synergetic effects. Uh, so, we understand what is needed by our government and what can we do using this synergetical efforts. Another example is, for example, that different, different participants of the initiative provide these pieces of puzzle which could be used by each other. For example, we use parcel delineation provided by Synergize and also, as I know, um, Joint Research Center also utilizes this uh, information to um, do uh, some uh, research, uh, not research, to adapt some uh, methodics that are uh, implemented in, in European Union but could not be implemented in Ukraine because in Ukraine we have no land parcel identification system. So we have no um, given parcel delineation and this product was very important for us to extend the European practice uh, for uh, Ukraine to estimate yield because this uh, technology uh, in Europe developed uh, on parcel based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Um, one more question. Um, OK, the data is there and at a certain level, the processing capabilities are also there. But uh, Professor Kusl also gave the example, for example, OCRE. And at one point, you also mentioned network of resources uh, to, to get additional processing uh, processing resources. So um, uh, Janor um, Jansi, do you want to uh, comment on this? So what kind of options might be available for the interested parties if they want to bring their expertise, but maybe they uh, with the lack of uh, sufficient computing resources. OK, so, so, so basically, uh, as we are a bottom up uh, initiative, we are looking for financing on the way. And so we managed to fix those two sources. So network of resources from ISA and OCRE to support Anhalt and uh, Kiev uh, Polytechnical Institute. So this is just to provide the uh, cloud computing and also the very high resolution data because here we will also buy some um, uh, data to some high resolution data of optical uh, and radar. So also from TerraSRX maybe. So uh, this, this is the one thing. So 
my advice for anybody who would like to do something for Ukraine is first of all to contact us because we know the ways where to go, for example, to look for financing. I mean, uh, ESA is very uh, happy to or, or, or very involved uh, in uh, financing the research for Ukraine. So if you would like, if you have an uh, ESA project or you want to run a small, for example, test uh, uh, feasibility study, uh, then you can go to the network of resources plot platform then you just fill a very short, uh, brief um, idea about your project. You submit, and then uh, you you get an answer within few few days, basically. So so this is very quick, uh, robust uh, way to obtain the access to uh, the whole uh, Claudia's cloud, to to our resources and to our data, basically. Uh, so so this is one thing. The OCRA, this is for the research institutes. Uh, there is uh, now there will be another uh, edition of the OCRA call. So I, we also invite everybody to to look at this because uh, as here we will uh, uh, we also supported um, um, our members uh, in submitting this proposal. Both were successful. So uh, really. There is a lot of op opportunities uh, on the market uh, to, to get financing for this kind of research. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, we are actually uh, out of time now, so one, one hour uh, runs pretty quickly. I want to really um, uh, thank thanks for all, all, all those speakers. Uh, first of all, for initiating uh, this, this wonderful initiative which really aims to to support Ukraine uh, for, for 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 the for the effort um, in in monitoring actually um, the damage that that uh, has been happening and probably will be continue for 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 some time and uh, I want to also um, uh, invite um, our our colleagues uh, at ITC UT and also the participants from from their institutions to to take part in the activity because I think. Everybody can do something about that uh, um, with their expertise, with their experience, with, with their methods, maybe. And as, as mentioned already, there are also uh, some, some funding uh, opportunities that are available for that purpose. Um, with this, I want to thanks again uh, for, for your contributions. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the meeting is recorded and it will be available so that people can also watch it uh, later on. And I will also send uh, the, the presentations and also uh, questions and answers uh, at a later stage. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.